Hello. Great to have you back uh, to this regular live here on my YouTube channel. Uh, if you are just tuning in right now, if it's your first one, basically it's your chance to ask me some of your money questions, your finance questions. If I can answer, I will. Uh, I've also got a question for you this week as well. Uh, and that is, I wanna know when you last went into a actual bank branch and why? And that's off the back of news that loads more bank branches, 44 bank branches from Lloyds and Halifax are gonna be closing uh, later this year. And there's already been a couple of hundred announced from other banks and so loads of that going on. So yeah, let me know. And I'll probably give another shout out to that in a minute when we've got a few more people watching. Often these things you ask me about, current accounts and savings and credit cards, happy to answer all that stuff. Quick heads up of some of the other content I have been producing uh, over the last week since our last get together. I've shared a little trick how you can get uh, O2 priority rewards. Uh, get that even if you're not on O2. So we can talk more about that, explain more if you've got questions about that. A lot of stuff about the Flexi Rail season tickets. They're now finally on sale. So we have a, a sense of how much tickets are gonna cost. So I can talk more about that article as well. And pretty much anything else you want to want to talk about. So yeah, just fire your questions away just to say hello um, and we can get started on that stuff. Hopefully this is uh, coming through to you on YouTube as well. I can see I've got people there. So I'll do say hello if you're watching um, on whichever way it is that you are you're doing this. So I think the uh, the live on Instagram is Instagram's a blooming nightmare. I'm gonna do it again. I think that has isn't working. So let's go live straight away. Right now it's probably working. So that will make sense, won't it? Sorry to you guys on YouTube, on Facebook. It's always a nightmare with this. Um, right, hello, welcome again. So I'm a quick hello. I uh, recap that for those of you who just joined on Instagram. It's always a nightmare getting that started. Don't know why. Uh, do say hello. Do let me know who you are. And uh, a question for you this week. When did you last go into a uh, bank branch and why? Let me know. Now, I did a sort of survey uh, for this very, very, very recently on YouTube. So let me get an idea of what you guys said, what your feedback was as a community. Um, and I'm quite surprised how many of you actually had have been. Uh, so I've had 173 votes so far, which is great. Thank you so much if you did take part in that. And uh, we've got 6% uh, of people went this week, which is really surprising. 12% went this month. 24% that went this year. 19% went last year. 39% can't remember when they last went to a bank. So yeah, let me know uh, when you last went into one. That'd be great to find out. Um, hello, got loads of you just joining in here. We hello to Referral World, to Sidhu, to Mock, to Gemma, to Sophie, to Road Apple, to Weekend Bakery. Again, any of your questions you've got, just let me know and I will help you if I can. Now, is it working, guys, on uh, YouTube? Normally, I've got loads of you asking me questions by now. I can see you're watching. I'm not getting any comments coming through. So if you're there, just tell me that it works. That'd be really useful to know. Uh, not sure. Ah, here we go. Fantastic. So it is working. So uh, Kidaki81, uh, the last time I went into a bank branch was probably early 2019, and that would have been to deposit cash. So yeah, I think that's probably the, for most of us, isn't it? That's the reason why uh, we've been in there. It's because we've got some cash. And what do we do? We don't spend it, put it in the bank. Maybe it's a gift that you've had, something like that. Um, or maybe you to take out some large sums of cash as well if you've got to pay for something uh, larger. Someone might want cash. I mean, the, the ethics of cash in hand is one for another time, maybe. Um, Andrew's got a question. Do you think I should apply for an Amex cashback card for my everyday spending? So, uh, hey, this is one of those things where if you feel comfortable with a credit card and you are going to make sure you completely clear that balance every single month, you're not going to get uh, caught out and get charged interest on it. Um, you're not going to make yourself spend more money than you actually can afford to spend because you see it and you think, right, you're going to do that then yeah, I think uh, cashback and reward credit cards are a great thing because you're gonna earn money for your spending. You're doing this on top of, well, for no effort at all really, you'll spend money and you'll get a little bit of cash coming back. So I absolutely think you should have a look at it. You can, as you can with any credit card, do an eligibility check first of all. It's a soft check, so it doesn't appear on your credit report. And this will give you an indication of how successful you're likely to be if you apply for it. And there might be, even within the same credit card company, different levels of that. So yeah, if you've got more questions about American Express or anyone else has, we can talk about that in a minute. Uh, Gemma said on Instagram, we can pay checks in via the apps. Um, I don't think I've been in for years. Yeah, that's true. Loads of them are doing that now. So obviously you've got the likes of uh, Starling and Halifax and Lloyds. Uh, who else there? NatWest have just introduced the feature, although it didn't really work for me. Quite a few of them let you do that on your phone, take a picture of that. So you don't even have to go in for that. So yeah, I think you're not alone there, Gemma, at all. 
Uh, hello to Yorkshire Davo and Rohans and that muted girl uh, and Rafa. Sophie says she can't remember. Hi to uh, Winksy. Hi to Mox. Uh, hi, nice to see you guys. If you are just joining now, my question for you this week is when did you last go into a bank and why? Uh, and Stuart has said over on YouTube, uh, my bank was branch was 12 years, my bank branch was 12 years ago. That's the last time you went. That's a, that's amazing. Let's see if I can get this added to the screen. There's a little feature that I can do. No, add to broadcast. Hang on, let's see what happens then. Hey, there we go. There you go, Stuart, you popped up there, which is great. So um, Sebastian has asked, uh, what would you say are the best high street banks on the market, apart from HSBC, which I'm looking to move away from? So yeah, really good question there, Sebastian. Thanks for that. So what makes a good bank, right? There are so many different metrics you could look at, so many different things that you personally might value more than other things. So uh, you could value freebies and free cash, in which case right now the free ones are uh, HSBC and First Direct with money. You won't obviously get those because you're with HSBC. Uh, Virgin Money is giving some free wine, 12 bottles of Virgin wine plus a 50 quid donation. So that's you, you move your bank and you get a nice upfront freebie there rather than cash sum, but it's definitely worth considering. You might want an ongoing reward. So maybe not that upfront cash, but something that gives you a return every single month. Uh, Halifax Rewards is pretty good for that. You can get five pounds every month or you can get a cinema ticket every month, which could be worth more if your cinema isn't one of the cheapy ones, if it's one of the more expensive or 24 movie rentals over a year. So two every single month. That can be quite good. There's a Club Lloyds account, which gives you uh, a, only six cinema tickets a year or 12 movie rentals, so half the amount with Halifax Rewards, but there's less hoops to jump through to get it. Uh, there's a Santander 123 Lite account, which gives you cash back on your bills. Again, you could be looking at 40, 50, 60 quid, maybe more, depending on your size of your bills. And that's great. So if you're after sort of monetary returns, you're getting something back from your bank, they're really good ones to look at. If you're more concerned about the ethics of your money, then generally you, you want to avoid all the big banks. Uh, HSBC and Barclays particularly have bad reputations in terms of what they're doing with your and other money they have saved and invest with, invested with them. Uh, if you, but then the rest of them are probably in the middle, not doing nothing particularly great either. If you want to go towards the more ethical sort, uh, there is one called Triodos. I've just got my card here. I haven't opened it up yet, but I've got my, I finally applied for this so I can review it and tell you more about it. That is generally perceived as the most ethical bank out there. It does charge you three pounds a month, but guess what that's happening because you're paying for the privilege of, you know, not having the money invested in uh, tobacco or uh, fracking or what arms trade or whatever it might be. If you don't want to pay three pounds a month, then maybe look at the building societies nationwide is always really good there. Starling has a pretty good reputation, but I think it's still pretty small. So who knows where that might go in the, in the future as it gets bigger. Um, or the most important thing might just be the app. I've got a whole video and article you might want to check out where I go into a bit more detail on those. But if you just want to have an app that does everything, then I would say go for Monzo and Starling. They're really, really good from that point of view. You can do so much more than you would with your normal bank. So definitely check those ones out. Uh, what else? Got loads of jumping on here. Let me just uh, get through these as well. Say hello to everyone who's joined in. The Home I Living uh, and Juan's joined in. Um, Gemma has asked, is changing your bank a bad idea if you're looking to move house in five to six years? No, no, absolutely not. Five to six years is so far away that that's not going to really make too much of a difference at all. When the, your credit report, they look for uh, longevity and something you've had for a relationship with a service for a long time, five or six years is going to be seen absolutely as you know a, a long relationship with a, a bank. Um, and obviously, when you change bank, you don't necessarily have to switch. You don't have to close your old account. You're only doing that if the promotion says uh, you have to switch to, to get that offer. So you can keep that old account open, just have it sitting there not really use it, but it keeps that kind of long relationship going. In terms of applying for a mortgage and also applying for other credit, so you get a credit check because of an overdraft with most current accounts or a credit card or even a mobile phone or switching your energy, whatever it might be. The general sort of thought is there is to avoid any applications six months before you apply for a mortgage. That's often how far back they go when they look at your bank statements, how far back they look at things uh, in terms of your, your credit report. But you might want to go a little bit longer if you're uh, really want to sort of make sure things sort of stay stay pretty strong. But yeah, five to six years away, you're absolutely fine with that. Um, that uh, Mituta girl, sorry, the print is typing so small that over here, I have to sort of lean in to read what the name is. Uh, does not using your credits reduce your credit score over time compared to someone with high usage but low utilization ratio? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, they want to see that you're using these products and you do it responsibly. So, you know, if you haven't, you've had a credit card and not used it for six years or something, then that's not going to be sort of, you know, demonstrated that you've got those payments going in and going out. Um, so you're better to use it a small amount on a regular basis if you can. Uh, in terms of credit utilisation, yeah, uh, that's a tricky one, isn't it, really, there? This is, I'm talking about this before on the lives. This is the amount of money you are borrowing compared to how much you can borrow within that sort of broader uh, credit limit across one or, or multiple cards. Um, the suggestion is to try and keep that around that kind of 30% bracket, ideally, and not go too more than that. But then, do you know what? I'm generally, if I use my American Express credit card for all my spending, I'm generally getting quite high up on uh, towards that limit every single month and it hasn't really impacted my score. So I wouldn't worry too much about that as long as you're clearing it every month. I think if it's a standing debt and it's there continuously, that becomes a, a bit more of a problem. Uh, hello to Jack and to Cody and to Sripad. Uh, right back to YouTube. And Christopher says, my last time I went to the bank was this month uh, try to go in just to keep the branch open, which is great. So if you, I'm assuming you're using it when you're in there, Christopher, but it's nice to know what kind of things you're doing uh, when you're there. Uh, please turn the sound up. Okay, let's bring the microphone up here a little bit. Hopefully that is helping. If that's better too, let me know. So uh, Stuart has said, uh, I was a loyal customer to Yorkshire Bank who have been swallowed up by Virgin. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, really thinking of moving banks. Would Monzo work based on my inactivity at a local branch? Thanks for the shout out. Yes, yeah, so... Uh, Yorkshire Bank and Clydesdale Bank, they were already a, a partnership. They were merged with Virgin, but the Virgin brand is what's taken it all over. So Virgin Money has all of those, and you've probably already seen, uh, I have in my high street at least, the, the Yorkshire Bank branch is now a Virgin Money Bank. Uh, if you want to move away from them and then you're keen on them, uh, then yeah, I, I think Monzo is a, is a really good shout. Give it a go. It doesn't cost you anything, as long as you go for the free option. I wouldn't suggest looking at the other options, the paid ones. I don't think you get a huge amount for your money. But I think you get a lot with a standard Monzo. But as I've said a number of times before, I don't think it's wise for anyone to have a single current account. So I would keep your Virgin Money account open and have that one for savings. You can get 2.02% on the first £1,000 saving there. So have that. Have a grand if you've got that or what if you've got sitting in there earning that interest. Um, and you've got access to go and get that if you want to. And then Monzo is one that you can use uh, for your everyday spending. In fact, again, loads of content on this already, and we can talk about it more if you want later. Um, but I've got videos and articles. I would have at least three or four different accounts with Monzo, one of them. Virgin Money can be one of them. And then maybe look at one for getting a reward every month and maybe one for cash back on your bills. So uh, Cyril has asked, do UK Amex cards transfer points to partners? If so, why do UK YouTubers not talk about this as benefit? So it depends what kind of American Express credit card you have. Some of them are just pure cash back and the cash back is paid basically to your bill on the 12 month anniversary. So you, after a year, all the money you've earned gets paid and knocked off that final credit card. Obviously, uh, if there's nothing on it, it will be as a credit so you'd have to pay more money to, to get it. But that's how that works. Others are points based. And when you get the points, you can use them in a number of different ways. Uh, but generally, these points are worth less. The Amex membership rewards points are normally worth the equivalent of 0.5% cash back. Uh, whereas, although it's changing, uh, with the Amex Platinum cards, you can get at the moment 1% going to 0.75% on, on that main one. So you can get more from that. However, as I've spoken about on YouTube before and on the blog, with this gold rewards card, the main one where you can earn those points, uh, you can swap them. In fact, any of those Membership, Amex membership points. You can swap them from Amex reward points into Avios points into Nectar points, and that increases their value to about 0.8%. And that actually makes it a pretty strong card compared to a lot of the others. However, the best one out there at the moment, anyway, as long as you're happy with Nectar points, is the Amex Nectar card, where you can get uh, equivalent of two Nectar points for every pound, which works out at 1%. But I will do more on this later on. Uh, Spice Culture said hello. Uh, my life, uh, Shripad, uh, Patricia, hello. Uh, Rachel, making money simple. Hey, Ryan. Uh, my life has said, uh, I'm currently looking for a savings account which has a book rather than a card. Do you know any? I already have a nationwide, but I'm close to their protected amount. It's a really good question. Does anyone know the answer to that? Do let us know in the comments. Any uh, savings accounts where you can get a book, a savings book? Um, potentially, I would imagine lots of the building societies might still do that. That was something that they used to do. But I, off the top of my head, I don't know about any others. Um, Simon does investing has said, Hi Andy, do you know why bank charges an account fee? I remember when I was little, this wasn't a thing. Is it just to get more money from us? 
Yeah, so it could well be. So there are a few different uh, banks that do charge a fee. And there's a few reasons they do that. Most of our normal current accounts are free right now. That could obviously change in the future, but that's how they are right now. Um, the ones that are charging a small fee, maybe two or three quid, you are getting, as long as you jump for a few other hoops, so that could be direct debits coming out. I said hoops a bit weird, didn't I? Hoops, uh, two or three direct debits coming out or whatever it might be, you'll get some money back. So you'll pay four pounds, but you'll get seven pounds back, which means you're three pounds up, 36 quid for the year. It's not a huge amount of money and that might not be something you want to move or open the account just to get that, but it's worth taking a look. The next level above that are kind of packaged accounts they're known as, and that's where it's maybe 13 to 17 quid, maybe more than that, for you to get insurance, uh, travel insurance, car breakdown cover, maybe gadget insurance, things like that. Sometimes they're just for you, sometimes they're for the family, sometimes the travel insurance is Europe, sometimes it's worldwide. Uh, they all have different options. They can work out pretty good value for money if you are uh, often buying all, if you're buying all those products, but if you're only buying one of them, sometimes they can be better just to buy them separately and just keep to a, a cheaper bank account. With the kind of more FinTech operated things, so like Monzo mentioned the fees they've got there, They've got to find a model. They've got to generate some income in some way. So they're trying to sort of charge tiers for extra features. Now, in the top tier, uh, similarly with Curve and Revolut and other places, you do get those insurance packages. Uh, with a Monzo, though, their middle one, uh, which is Monzo Plus, which is £5 a month, you just get extra features, which are not too bad. You get disposable virtual debit cards, things like that. I just don't think they're worth £5 a month. It could be in the future, particularly uh, if, you know, banks want to try and... Uh, if they want to make it harder for banks to make money through things like overdrafts, obviously that didn't quite work. Overdraft rates have jumped up a huge amount. But if banks do need to kind of get money from us, you could see the end of free accounts here. Lots of other countries, America, apparently lots of Europe, you will pay every single month to have a current account. Um, so what we got here? Uh, oh, the sounds better. Sorry about that, guys. It's new setup. You can see I didn't do any shopping at Amazon Prime, but I did buy a new bookcase, which I've got behind me, which now means I can uh, do this from my desk rather than elsewhere uh, so uh, i didn't get the mic properly set up um mc has asked is there a minimum amount of time i need to have an account before switching and getting a current account switching bonus it depends on the bank it really does they all have different um terms and conditions some of them as soon as you've got that cash bonus you can go some of them will make you wait three months to get that cash bonus um <clears throat> and others might explicitly say you have to keep it open so that's what you need to look at uh, in terms of that, doing that, I think that answers the question. Do I want to, yeah, okay. Uh, what's wow? Okay, here's a here's a question, D Donald. What is the best thing to do with 100k, but just for 18 months? So this is the kind of thing that often happens if someone's maybe got an inheritance or they've moved house, sold a house, and they haven't bought a new house just yet. Big lump sum of money that you've got. If this is temporary, uh, then you are protected for a short amount of time beyond that 85,000 pound financial services compensation scheme limit this is where if the place where you're holding the money was to go bust then that money is protected it's safe but only up to 85k but in these small these uh, uh temporary periods you get an extended and it's quite i can't remember what it's off my head but it's a lot of money so you'll be protected by that 100k if this is just money that you've got that you've earned then one of the most important things to do is to make sure that, that is split into two different institutions and make sure that they aren't connected somehow because sometimes you get banks such as first direct and hsbc which count as the same financial institution. So double check that, uh, but no more than 85K in one of them. Um, then what do you do with the rest of it? Now, if it's a short amount of time, you probably don't wanna be looking to invest it because there is the risk that if you wanna to need to use that money, that value could have gone down in that time. So you are looking at savings accounts and you will know this, the rates are pretty poor right now. You could put 10K in a chip plus one account spoken a lot about this so i won't go into detail now check out the videos i've got on youtube or the article over on the blog where i review this in fact if you type chip plus one review into google my review is top or second something like that uh 10k in there you'll get after the fee that's factored in about 1.06 percent back on that which doesn't sound like a lot but that's the best you're going to get then maybe for the next 50 because that's the, the most you can put in premium bonds maybe it's putting it in there it's easy access the more money you have in there the more likely you are to win and with the average rate of luck uh, with that one, I think you'll be approaching nearly 1% uh, return on that as well. So that would hopefully give you as close to 1% as you can on 60K. After that, the extra 40, well, you're probably looking at, well, actually, you've got 18 months. If you're happy to lock it away, there are some one-year fixes around the 1% mark. It seems to be going up and down 
on a kind of every other day basis. Maybe it's just above one, maybe just below one. Um, you can lock it away for a year. Now, obviously that money is locked away. You can't get it in that 12 months. You get a longer rate. There are 18 month fixes as well. Um, but obviously if rates do drop, jump up everywhere else, then you're stuck in at that rate. But that's a risk you might want to take. Uh, so I hope that's helped. They're kind of with that large sum amount of money, that, that's what I would do. But, but absolutely make sure if it's not a temporary amount of cash that you are uh, spreading it in case you, know, you, you lost uh, the bank went bust. Um, let's jump back over to here, going really quick over here. So we have got from Mock, any preferences between the Nationwide Flex Direct and the Virgin Money M Plus current account? Now, these are the two accounts which you can, anyone can get, you can just open them up. You don't have to switch into them. Um, and you can get interest uh, of around 2% on the first amount of money you have in there. Should I say with the Nationwide Flex Direct account, you can only get this the first time. So if you had it in the past, you won't get this introductory rate, which is fixed for one year at uh, 2% on the first one and a half grand. So you get a fixed amount, it can't change, and you get more money than the Virgin one, as we mentioned, it's 2.02%, but that is variable on the first grand. Um, however, what I would say is, because you can only get that Nationwide Flex Direct account once, you're looking at a very, very small amount of money, 30 quid um, over the year, you'll get, you open that account now. If they keep those terms and conditions and in two, that you can only have it once for that first year and in two years time, suddenly they're offering 5% or whatever it might be on uh, five grand, which is what it, or two and a half grand, which is what it used to be, then you're losing out on that money. So I would give that one a miss. I would leave that for now. Uh, but I would look at like, the Virgin Money M Plus account and you can have more than one of these. Again, some people watching have said they've had 10, 12, 13, I mean, I think the most was 15 different of these accounts. So that's 15 grand saved. So you could do that, but that's a lot of effort to open up all those different accounts just for, for a, you know, 20 quid a year. But it's worth considering, absolutely. Uh, in terms of the app, I'm not a big fan of the Nationwide app. The Virgin app is all right as well. It's probably better, uh, a lot better in fact, but they all are pros and cons with them. Uh, hi to Flat, hi to Sally, hi to Sam, hi to Archive, hi to Rochelle, hi to Andy. Uh, let's go back to got a load of these come here over on YouTube as well. So we have got uh, Stephen says, Andy, thanks for your advice. Really helping me. Stuart says, thanks for your advice. Uh, by the way, guys, if you just joined and you're tuning in now, my question for you this week, let me know when you last went into a bank branch and why you did it as well. And that's off the back of the news that Halifax and Lloyds are closing 44 branches this year which follows on from announcements from Santander and HSBC at the start of the year of another couple of hundred or so banks going. So repeating this year after year, this is always happening, but keen to know uh, if you, when you last went and why you last went into one. So uh, three S34 NCL, uh, can I ask how taking a consolidation loan to pay off credit cards affects your credit score? So if you're taking out a loan, uh, any kind of loan, whether it's to consolidate debts or just because you, I know you, you need some money towards um, some urgent repairs to the roof or whatever it might be. Uh, obviously, you are credit checked for that, and if you're successful, and then you are seeing you have got a, an amount of debt on there which you are paying back. So I don't think it would be any different necessarily to having the uh, actual credit card debts on there, as long as you're doing what you can to, to pay them off, and hopefully it's at a lower rate. So that's a good thing. So you will be paying off at a much faster date. Obviously, there are scales of things here. So I guess if it's a really, really, really uh, big loan, uh, that's not going to look great for you. But at the same time, you're just transferring that that debt over, aren't you? So I don't think it'll be a, a huge problem there. Uh, Jack has said the stream doesn't seem to work via Facebook, top quality via YouTube. Thank you. Facebook has been a nightmare on this for a while. So thanks for letting me know that wasn't coming through. So uh, Carty has said, hey, evening, Andy, I recently got a one, two, three mini current account from Santander for under 18s. Do you reckon it's a decent bank for individuals under 18 or are there better banks offering better perks? So uh, I haven't had a look at a while at the kids' current accounts and I need to sort of do an update on this one. Uh, generally, the under 18 ones, they're all much of muchness. You want to look for, ideally, I guess, the ones with the best interest rate. They're the big perks you get. It's not like when I was little and NatWest had all the collection of pigs. The more money you saved, you got a different piggy bank. I never got off the baby one, I don't think, for whatever reason, uh, which is unusual because I used to save a lot. Maybe, maybe you need a lot of money, I can't remember. Uh, so I would say if you're happy with that one, then stick with that one for now. If you're going to university at 18, that's when you want to be looking at all the different options. There are freebies that come into play there. Less so last year during the pandemic, but in previous years, there was free cash, free rail cards, things like that. But possibly the one that's going to be most important to people if they're students going to uni is the size of that interest-free overdraft. Uh, and they are, that varies depending on the bank and also different ways you get it. Sometimes it's the same amount every term, same amount every year. Sometimes it tapers up or tapers down. Uh, so that's one of the things to, to think about there. 
Uh, Christopher says the Build and Society has a book account. Is that which one is that one, Christopher? Which Build and Society? Or are you saying all, all of them? Uh, Christopher Jacks has said, if you have dual fuel with an energy provider and then decide to move just electricity to a different provider, do you know if your plan for gas will be affected? Well, potentially, yeah. So a lot of the time when you get dual fuel, you're getting your gas and electricity from the same supplier. There will be a discount for doing that. Uh, so have a look and see what goes on. So if you move one fuel away, it might be you lose that discount that, that's given for, for both fuels. Um, you also need to make sure if you're fixed in them, obviously, if you've got a joint switch at the same time and they're both fixed, there'll be a penalty to leave. If you're out of contract on both of them, then I would suggest you switch and move both of them at the same time and get yourself uh, onto a lower fee, particularly as it's been reported quite heavily this week. I know Martin Lewis, the money sending expert, did a big thing on this. When the energy price cap jumps up in October, I think it is, it's going to go up by a huge amount because it's locked right now. Most of the providers at the top of that cap, they can't go any higher, but their costs are way up. So they're going to jump up way beyond that to recover those costs, uh, even if prices start to jump down. So uh, yeah, so Christoph, Christoph, I would say if you're fixed, you probably can't switch without a penalty. If you're not fixed, then make sure you do fix both of them somewhere else. It would be my, my tip to you. Uh, Kian has asked, do I do any property investment? No, I don't. I've got the house that I'm in right now. And that obviously is, is partly an investment as well. But I don't do any broader. I don't have any other properties at all. So uh, F.I. Kung, really struggling with what credit card to get, Tesco's or Amazon. So this is a really uh, a popular question asked me, what's the best credit card? Uh, as I say, I'll repeat myself. I don't mind repeating myself on this one because it's a really good message to get through to everyone. You just need to make sure that you are uh, doing those eligibility checkers, first of all, and you've got a good chance of being accepted on both of them. If it's equal, then great. If one of them has a better chance than the other, then go for the one that gives you the best chance. Um, if you're looking at these ones because you shop regularly with Tesco or Amazon, then you want to weigh up what those additional points are worth. The Amazon card, uh, if you're a Prime member, does give you roughly 1.5% back on Prime on Amazon purchases, which you can't beat. It's very difficult to beat that. Not so great elsewhere. Uh, the Tesco one isn't particularly good in terms of points back from club car points. You get a few more, but you don't get much elsewhere. Again, I've got whole articles and videos which go through the best kind of reward cards that are out there. If that's why you're going for it, I assume that's why you're doing it. Uh, my life said she went to the bank yesterday to change the money and check the transaction. So you're using it, Rochelle. Uh, I went to HSBC on Tuesday to change the name on my account. Uh, so yeah, this is great. So you are still using them, which is really interesting. Sorry if I'm not saying hello to some of you guys who have joined in subsequently. Uh, the Instagram one does move really, really fast. Um, back over here. Uh, Richard has said, last time I went to a bank was September last year to pay in a check. Never have any other needs to use a branch, especially as I can now pay in via the First Direct app. Yeah, I mean, First Direct, uh, we talk about Monzo and Starling as being you know app-based and not having a branch. First Direct hasn't had a branch since inception. It started off as a telephone bank, although you can use HSBC uh, branches. Um, MC has asked, uh, is it okay to open an account just to switch later for a switching bonus? Oh, 100%, absolutely. I've basically got a switching account, which I don't use. I just switch that again and again and again to get the promotions. Uh, the one I would suggest you look at for this is a TSB spend and save account. I haven't checked the cashback rate recently, but via Quidco, you can get between 30 and 60 quid. It varies week to week for opening this account. You have to keep it for about four months uh, before you can switch it if you want to get that cashback. Forget the spend and save cashback that it comes with. That's a joke. We do that switch. Um, get that account four months later switch it to another account and then switch and switch and switch I do that all the time so there's no problem doing that uh, Kukurga has said if a bank uh, allows you an overdraft does it have a positive effect on your credit report uh, probably not I would imagine because um, you've got more access to cash which is very expensive credit um, because it's not like if you use it and then pay it off use it and pay off you're going to get charged as soon as you use it unlike a credit card where you're only going to get charged to uh, interest if you don't pay it off at the end of the month. So I think overdrafts generally, unless uh, you want like a bit of a buffer, they're generally best avoided. First Direct has a 250 pound 0% buffer, which is not bad at all. Uh, and Nationwide, if you need a bigger 0% overdraft, Nationwide Flex Direct will give it to you for 12 months the first time you get it. Um, Pakashti has asked, can you get a credit card if you are in an overdraft? Maybe. It all depends about your credit report. You can be in your overdraft, but have some other great sort of uh, elements and strong elements within your credit report. Uh, it's a really most important thing here is to go to your credit report, check it. There are three of these. Again, videos on the YouTube channel 
articles on the blog which take you through how to do this. You shouldn't pay to check your credit report. Make sure everything's up to speed there. See what you can do to improve it and then use those eligibility checkers to see if you can get a credit card. Uh, there is a thing called a money transfer credit card. This has a fee, a transfer fee attached to it, but this can be a great way to get rid of an overdraft, uh, at least pay it on a, on a 0% period for a while. Uh, again, an article on that on the blog you might want to check out if you've got a, a big overdraft already. Uh, we're getting towards the end of our time now, guys. So I'll try and work through about another sort of five minutes, work through the questions we've got. Uh, Christopher's come back. The Coventry Building Society has a savings book. So that question we had earlier on, uh, Coventry Building Society would also give you a, a book. So hopefully that will help you uh, who asked earlier on. Hi to uh, Penny Pinching Man, and to Selsheen and to Orbis and to Stooja, um, Amimi. Um, Rachel said the Santander student account was amazing. Yeah, that's generally had some uh, you know decent uh, options for you. I think that one came with the rail card. Can't remember now, but it's worth thinking about. Uh, Rachel then also said uh, her bank is opposite where we work, but I can't remember the last time she went in. The uh, Kurt Carty has said uh, Santander student bank account offers a rail card, so I was right there. And other perks, but demands for five hundred pounds annually, I believe. Do you think it's worth it? So I'll be primarily tra traveling via train. So I mean, five hundred pounds annually to be paid into the account is not going to be difficult because you've got your student loan coming in or other kind of costs. You are going to have five hundred pounds that comes in. Uh, for you to pay out again. Uh, the student rail card is a great thing to get if you are traveling via train uh, and you're doing it regularly. But of course you can just buy one and there are often other promotions that, that get you access to this. So you really need to wait up in comparison to other accounts based on those other features. Don't get sort of swung by that little sweetener deal. You really want to check is that interest-free overdraft going to be the best thing for you if you need it. And if you think you're not going to need overdraft while you're at university, then that's fantastic as well because that's less money you'll have to pay back when you graduate. Uh, Rob has said, I've been into a bank branch just once over this entire pandemic, and that was only because it was not possible to pay into a nationwide at the post office. Um, Christoph says, top tips will investigate. Thanks for everything you do. Uh, no problem, Christoph. I'm always happy to help you guys. Uh, Kiana said, the last time I went into a branch was to pay in some cash at the machine. Haven't even been to a counter in four years. Uh, and also, I really like the new set and layout. Uh, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, I've got a bit more going on on the screen as well. Um, where else have we got? So we're getting towards the uh, the end of time here. As your questions, guys. Andrew said, "I've done an eligibility check on Experian. It is seventy percent. Is it worth applying?" So Andrew asked earlier on uh, at the top of the show, uh, should he apply for an American Express uh, cashback or reward credit card? And I said, "Well, what are your chances of getting it?" So seventy percent, seven out of ten. That means that's pretty good, isn't it? But it also means there's a thirty percent chance you'll get rejected. So your question is, um, is how good is your credit report right now? The credit score doesn't really mean a huge amount, but it is an indicator of how strong your report is. So if your credit score is sitting pretty high, then you, if you get rejected, it's not gonna to be too much of an issue in terms of the dip that it will do. You don't wanna then apply for another credit card and get rejected again and so on like that. Um, but also, do you need other things coming up in, anytime soon? Are you remortgaging or getting a mortgage? Do you need a large loan? Anything which is probably more important than this credit card uh, should take priority. So you don't want to maybe put the risk on it. But I would personally, seven out of 10 chance, I would fancy my odds. But that's a very personal thing that you have to sort of think up for yourself. Um, and then we've got a question here. Uh, SJ said, went into the bank a while ago to sort out the bank accounts. Again, it's one of those things, isn't it? I, I think they are going to be disappearing more and more and more. We use them less and less and less. But I personally do like to have an account with a bank near me. So if I need to go in and sort something out, I can. Uh, and have a little bit of some money sort of moved around. Maybe it's in a separate savings account. At least I can move it into you know, that branch. If, for example, like we had a few years ago when that TSB debacle, when all their accounts went down. And let me just check. Hopefully, if I missed anything, guys, I really apologize. I hope I've caught everything that you guys have asked. It's sometimes difficult when there's all these things coming through. I do really love this. The really important thing I want to share with you is uh, next week, this live will be on Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday at 6 p.m. So I'm going to try it out on a Wednesday over the summer because I think less of us are going to be sort of watching as much content. So I'm going to maybe move it along uh, so I can maybe have a bit of a breather as well. Just to do, do less videos during the week. Uh, so Wednesday at 7 p.m. And don't forget, if you want to make sure you, sorry, at 6 p.m., if you want to get all my videos, uh, all my articles, all my podcast episodes, everything I do, make sure you sign up to my newsletter, becleverwithyourcash.com forward slash newsletter. Put your email address there. Every Thursday morning, you'll get the best of what I do. Plus, if you've never signed up to the cashback site Quidco before, you'd also get a £17 bonus. 
so uh do that that would be fantastic so yeah thank you guys thank you so much for joining in uh rob says thank you for your advice as massively appreciated yeah mate i really appreciate everyone's questions i i love doing this with you um oh one last question let's just do this last one because we've got it coming from james what are your thoughts on banks like hsbc releasing new card designs is this to aim their bank at uh the youth or to challenge banks like starling i think it's just a marketing ploy isn't it anything they can think to make their, their customers think they're getting something uh, extra from the bank uh nice card looking cards are nice things to have but i would never choose a bank based on what the card looks like uh so yeah it's if you're with hsbc and you want to change your account then why not you know give it a go uh, but i wouldn't yeah, choose to go with them in the same way i wouldn't choose to go with monzo just because uh they've got that hot pink coral card or starling because they've got their mint uh card anyway that's it i'm going to finish things off for now guys uh thank you so much and i will see you guys again next wednesday okay cheers <laughs>